they're all setting fire to the boat. They're all chucking like petrol bombs and just all like chanting at the boat. It was, it was crazy. Now I'm traveling somewhere where not many people travel. Most people from Dhaka will go back, will go left and back towards Morocco. And if you think the roads in Morocco are crazy, then wow, this place is another level, another level. Welcome back to Dakala, where I've been here for the last two days in this hotel room because when I arrived, I was driving aimlessly through the industrial quarter and all the streets were shut and there were no shops open. So I was like, right, I need to stay somewhere nice and just relax for a couple of days. I've driven thousands of miles. Today though, we are going to be leaving this hotel and we're going to be leaving Dakala to head to Mauritania. We're going to be driving to a place called Gujarat, which is definitely not pronounced right, but it's on the border. It's about three and a half hours south. And then from there, we're going to hopefully cross into a new country, which I'm really excited about. But another kind of a very real situation happened here in Dakala. So I went to the beach and it was very beautiful, white sands, blue water. And there was a fishing boat there and there must have been 200 guys from West Africa all just sat on the beach. And the police were like, no, you cannot film here, you cannot come here, this is interdict. Um, these are pirates. And the police and the people of this uh, of Dakala were all setting fire to the boat. They were all chucking like petrol bombs and just all like chanting at the boat. It was, it was crazy. And it was kind of at that point where I was like, oh no, you really are, um, you really have come a long way here. You really are in Africa now. I spent the last two days in Dakar, I didn't even realise this place was here. It's called KM25, it's like the the home of kite surfing really. It's like the most popular place to kite surf in the world. Which is a shame because I don't know how to do that. I don't know if I've got the time to learn because I need to be out of the country in a few days. But look at this, look how many kites there are. I have absolutely no idea how I missed this on the way through but I managed to. I'm a little bit good actually because it looks like loads of fun but I, my time has run out so I just cannot stay and do it but um, I'm sure there'll be another time, there'll be another time where I can sell base here but as I said we're about four hours away from the border which closes at 6pm and it's now 1pm so hopefully I get there in time otherwise we're going to spend the night there. We're about 10 minutes into our journey and I hope the road conditions have improved because I'm sh I don't know if the van could do 380 kilometers of this. Look at it. I think this is the point in the, the entire trip where I go from just traveling to somewhere that is common and you know, not massively off the beaten track to now I'm traveling somewhere where not many people travel. Most people from Dakar will go back go left and back towards Morocco. I don't know how many people turn right and start going down towards the west of Africa. So I'm excited for the rest of this trip. Um, let's just hope me and the van both make it. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing? Good, how are you? English first? English. Where are you going? I am going to Mauritania. Oh, okay. Can I see the passport? Passport? Yeah. Yep. Somewhere in there, the picture. Oh, okay. You come from Dakhla? Dakhla, yes. You, you don't have a fish? A fish? Uh, yeah. I do, yes. Yes, Would you? Some, uh, Can I see? Yeah. But I need to cut the fish. You know, it's here, but I need to... Scissors. You want, you want one? If you want. Yeah, I'll give you one. One second. You need a lot of copy in Mauritania, okay? For passport or fish? Or fish. A fish. I think I have uh, 24. That's enough. Not enough? No. Yeah, yeah. Really, I need more. It is okay, Mauritania? It is nice? Or... Yeah? Our country is better. Oh, Morocco is better? Yeah. Look at this broken down car. I wonder what nationality is. I'm pretty sure I saw like a European plate on this car. So I wonder what the story is. Look. Ah, French. French Tesla. 
without a tyre. Didn't stand a chance today. As soon as it broke down, they decided, nope, we're going to find another way. I hope that's not me. Hope that's not me. Okay, good to go. We've got a full tank now and we are 92 kilometers away from the Mauritanian border. It was worth filling up here, apparently, so I've been told, because the diesel is much cheaper. It costs approximately 95 pence a litre, which is scandalous in this, uh, in this economy. Okay, we have finally made it to Gwenjura. And it was um, an overestimation, it was 90 minutes, it probably only took me an hour. And I am really not sure what to expect from this border. There's an extremely long line of lorries which I'm not getting in. Um, my mate here. Yeah. I may just be skipping the queue here, but I'm going to have to plead ignorance. Where are the rest of the civilians? I like it, it's nice. Daniel? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, what time? Uh, never. Never? Never. Okay, I can leave the van there or I join Sibian. the... Sibian? All right. Oh, that's bad news, very bad news. So we're here for the night. Might as well get immerse ourselves with the locals, see what's what. Interesting, really interesting 10 hours. Okay, good morning. Here we go. Just crossed through the Moroccan side of the border. Didn't really do much last night. I sat down and they gave me some food. I had like a, a bean soup, which kind of tastes like the Heinz tomato soup with the alphabets in it, and some milk and some orange juice and some dates. And there was loads of flies, and it was nice. And then just played some pool with some of the locals and went to sleep but here we are I'm excited I'm ready to do this so let's go let's go to Mauritania out I've got Hooper in my eye that was a crazy experience everyone just queues outside this little hut and they all just throw their passports into the mix and hopefully get the exit stamp and hopefully get it back which I did so we're good to go do you have your passport? yes and try not to pass the scanner C'est bon C'est bon C'est bon, c'est en véhicule, tu passes au scanner. Ok. Et ça, tu tournes à droite, avant les camions. Oh. Sorry, sorry. Je suis désolé. Je suis désolé. Sorry, sorry. Où allez-vous Pas le Pas le scanner Je parle anglais. Yes. Ah, il veut happy, mais qu'est-ce qu'il fait Il ne peut pas plaire à tout le monde. Thank you, shukran. Never shut the door. So this is the passport for your van. And somehow I managed to, between the scanner and 10 meters in front, lose it and drop it on the floor. So I was in, I was in a blind panic. So I went to the office. I was like, I've lost this thing. And the guy was like, is this what you're looking for? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, good job I found it. Cause otherwise you could not leave the country. So luck is on our side. Okay, we have made it, made it through the Moroccan side of things and now we are in no man's land, a strip of about four kilometers that belongs to absolutely nobody. And I, well, I think that's what this is. So I'm assuming we're gonna drive and find the Mauritanian border because I've not done anything in that regard. And 
yeah it was actually it was crazy i was just going around in circles giving paper here passports here then going back to the start it was it's like nothing i've ever seen to be honest i mean the road conditions here are absolutely terrible i was hoping we make it over this this stretch of however long it is so don't get stuck look at this oh yo so I've just gone in this building here to get a Passavon, which is similar to that little bit of card I had before, which gives me 30 days in the country for 10 euros. It's basically a passport for the for the van. This is my mate who's helping me change the money. Pasta, pasta like uh no not pizza, like pasta, like um like this, you know? Ah, okay. But... Uh, ah, very bad, very bad. Very bad. Okay. <laughs> Milia football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 See Mauritania. It was predominantly a nomadic country until the 1960s. People used to just travel around, they never really had bases, so it explains why it's the least populated country in Africa and one of the least populated countries on earth. It's just so spread out, and the majority of it, I think 80% of it is the Sahara Desert. So there's only two major cities which I think we're going to see. We've got about 10 days of insurance, which I think I overpaid for. It was like £40 for 10 days, so I'm pretty sure I got ripped off there. But Ah, you live and you learn, you live and you learn. It was also the last country on earth to abolish slavery in 1981, which means I think there's a lot of racial tension. I'm pretty sure in the 1990s, because of the country adjusting from having slaves to slaves being free men, the government decided to kick most of the West Africans out of the country, so there was a mass exodus. So I'm not sure what we're going to find or what it's going to be like, but um, I'm looking forward to getting into one of the cities and We'll have a proper look around once I'm all sorted out. We're coming up to our first little town here. I don't think it's Nwadi Bao, but I'm not sure at all because I haven't got the internet. I refused to buy it at the border because I just thought, last time in Rock, I'm sure I got ripped off, so I thought I'd get it here. But there's... I'd be surprised if it is Nwadi Bao, but there's not a lot going on. There's more life than there was in the south of Morocco, but I don't know. It turns out this is not any bow, which you definitely not was expecting. I don't know what I was really expecting, but this wasn't it. But I like it, it's got character. So lots of character. I have absolutely no idea where I'm gonna park up. Mm. Welcome to No Adi Bow. Place is like no I've ever seen in my life. It was actually a little bit overwhelming when I first came, but nothing, a quick shower and a restaurant sort out. I might find a little campsite, but I'm still trying to work out the currency and trying to work out my location. But for now, we're going to walk into the town, we're going to have a look around and we're going to try to stay out of trouble. Hey, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Speaking of trouble, when I first arrived, the police pulled me over like, interdict, interdict. I was like, what's wrong? It's like you've got black marking on your window that you have to take off. So I spent about half an hour trying to get that off the window that doesn't unwind. I've also got a new friend. Saba? Mashallah. But we're going to try and get into the main market now because when I drove past it, it was absolutely crazy. So I'm going to try and show you guys that. But um, yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling much better. I'm adjusting to it. I'm like the Milky Bar kid, I stand out like an absolute sore thumb. Everyone's looking at me like I'm a madman. I have zero idea what I've just bought, but it's got some like red sauce in it.
Patrick, up! Add tomatoes and onions and chilli, very hot. Very hot. <laughs> Definitely not like anywhere else I've ever been before, but people are doing the usual thing, selling food, selling veg, chit chatting, passing the time, it's cool, it's very cool. Just by the clothing markets now, and I'd say on first impressions, people are a lot less smiley, a lot less friendly here, or maybe just a bit more closed off and reserved, I don't know. It's not like when you enter Morocco and people are trying to talk to you all the time, people are trying to keep a distance, and the kids basically think they've seen a ghost, so it's uh. An interesting experience, it's a very interesting experience. If you think the roads in Morocco are crazy, then wow, this place is another level, another level. So I've just come off the main strip now and I'm heading down towards the port of Nuadibu, where it's probably going to be a little bit quieter because that place was absolutely wild. Like, it's like nothing I've ever seen before, nor ever been. It's uh, such a new experience for me, but yeah, I've been recommended by the place that I'm camping and by the gentleman there to try the fish at the port. So he said, go close to sundown and um, have a look around and try some stuff. And he said, he said, I like it. So we'll go and we'll see. It's time to try and work out the currency. It's a lovely aircon in here. Very nice. Very nice and cool. Hello. Hello, no, I'm just me this Le lo? Yes. This is the pub. Every time I'm eating or I'm drinking something, it gets taken out of my hand. I mean, people do ask, and I just think, oh, you know what, well, I can... I'm fortunate enough to get another one, so I don't, I don't mind. But it's like every, every single thing I've got just goes... Policeman asked my juggling balls earlier. Ridiculous. Okay, I think it's time to get back to the van. And I think, in all honesty, I'm probably a little bit disappointed in Luaudi Bao and this part of Mauritania. And I mean, it's early days, it's the first day, so it's probably too early to judge the country, but I think these guys playing football are about to start playing football on the pitch. And I was like, you know what, that'd be nice. So I said in, in French, like, can I, can I play with you guys? And they looked me up and down and went, for you, if you want to play, you give me five mil, which is 5,000 in French. And I think that's like 20 pounds here. So they were just like, all the best to you. Not today, no thank you. But I just think like I've never ever been to a country where people haven't like welcomed you in to play with them or like been interested in playing with you. They were just so like not bothered, don't want to play with you and I think that's quite strange. And then you just become that guy with your tail between your legs asking people to like play with them and they just say no so it kind of hurts your ego a bit as well. But I think it's probably best to get back to the van, relax for the night, it's a nice little campsite and then keep the show on the road move on move on somewhere else let's keep going oh, oh. home sweet home wow when in doubt get back to the van i actually met a really nice swiss guy who's here as well and he was like um so what do you think about the place? Oh well, um, trying to play it cool, I was like, yeah, it's okay, and he was like, it is awful. He was like, you must go to Dakar, you must keep going to Dakar. So on that note, that's exactly what I think I'm gonna do. I'll spend the night here and then I'll start going south because, I don't know, this is clearly a very tough place and uh, 
it's an adventure and it's exciting but it's so intense and I think there is more for me further south so on that positive note I'm gonna love you and leave you be kind to yourselves take care of yourselves I'll see you next time